Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. So glad you could join me today. Um, today, we're going to be making, uh, I'm going to show you how to make a card using napkins. Um, you can get so many beautiful napkins. And for people who don't feel like they're particularly artistic, myself included, um, it's really hard to, uh, I can't draw myself out of a paper bag. So, um, but there's so many beautiful napkins out there that you can utilize to create um, really beautiful images and beautiful, beautiful cards. So that's going to be our technique for today is showing you how to do this. Okay, so let's get started. Um, what you're going to need in the technique I'll be showing you, there are several techniques. Uh, one you can do with saran wrap and an iron, um, but you know that that involves a lot of heat and I'm thinking I'm going to keep my fingers away from that if I can. Um, you can use another technique using um, double-sided adhesive like uh, Suquang or something if you have the larger pieces. Um, that can be really beautiful. It uses a lot of glitter, um, but uh, it, it is a way that I have done it in the past. The way that I'm going to show today is by using Mod Podge. Um, the one that I like to use is the matte um, because I'm going to add glitter to it. Um, I do mine in two stages. And so I'm going to demo that for you, obviously. But uh, the first step is I like to put the napkin down on my cardstock. Um, so I use a light coat of Mod Podge and then let it dry. And then I go back with a second coating to kind of seal it. And then I spritz on some glitter um, or I don't, depending on the kind of card that I want to make. But um, anything with flowers and things like that really does look really pretty with glitter. Um, but it is it is certainly your choice whether you want to use glitter or not. Um, but you can get Mod Podge that has a holographic glitter in it, um, which can work really excellent for the top coat. I would not use that for the bottom coat because it is more expensive than um, your regular Mod Podge. Um, but um, yeah, so use this one for the bottom one. And then if you get the holographic one, you could use that for your top coat. And it has that beautiful glitter and, and sparkle to it. So uh, a friend of mine used it and hers, her uh, fronts turned out really beautiful. So I know that it works. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go with the supplies that I have, which is matte, um, Mod Podge and just some white cardstock. I think this is about an 80 pound, so it's not super heavy duty. It doesn't need to be because we're going to be adding a couple of layers on here. So it doesn't have to be super, super heavy duty. Okay. And then I'm going to take my napkin. How cute is this? Oh, a friend of mine brought this back from the States and I'm just in love with it. And I have a young nephew who loves the Mandalorian. So I think this might be his birthday card that we'll be making here. Okay, so each napkin will have at least one um, image on it. Sometimes when you open them, though, you'll get uh, like this image would be repeated here, 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 and here. So you'll actually get four images out of one napkin. This particular one, I'm going to get one full of Grogu here and uh, Star Wars and then uh, two of the Mandalorian. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. But I'm, first of all, what I want to show you is how to open up your napkin, how to, we need to get it down to the thinnest, thinnest layer. Most napkins will have two, actually most napkins will have three layers, sometimes four. So we need to make sure that we're getting it down to the very, very last layer. So what I like to do is go along the edge here and I kind of stretch out the fibers here using my thumb, okay? where it's all kind of um, pinched together. That's a, a machine kind of pinches that together so that the layers of the tissue stick together originally. And you start to see that it starts to come apart a little bit here. Okay. And I'm just gonna keep going along here, pulling off this one layer. And this might be it, but I think, I think there's still one more on there. So I'm gonna try that out not quite as translucent as I would think it would need to be. It still feels quite thick. So we're gonna try it out and see if there's still one more layer. And again, I'm just taking my thumb, taking my thumb and forefinger here, and I'm just kind of rubbing it along the edges here. And I can see, I think I can see here that there is a little layer. Sometimes you need to tear it. Nope, that's it. Okay, got a strange coating to it. All right, so turns out there was just three layers on that one. Weird. Okay. 
Um, so when you're doing these things, you want to make sure that you're also putting them on a white cardstock because you want the colors of the, the backing and whatever you have there. You, that's what you're going to want to have come through. So because um, I don't need all of this white space and everything like that, I'm going to cut out this image here. Some of the uh, luncheon napkins, if you get the long, kind of tall ones, they make beautiful slimline cards. That's what I used on the example that I showed you at the beginning of the um, video here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this over here to my cardstock. And I need to grab another piece of cardstock because I'm not going to have enough for all of these images here. And some of these images look really great because um, you can uh, add it to the back. Um, if you're doing a slim line, sometimes you want, you can add the, um, sometimes you need more than what your, your actual image is. Okay. So Grogu here is pretty big on his own. So I'm going to stick him down on just one sheet. And then these other three pieces, I'm going to stick on another piece. So I've just got a plain old um, paintbrush here. You can use a foam brush, whatever you would like. And I'm going to open my Mod Podge. Mold your podge. Uh, oops. And I'm going to paint it onto my paper. And um, you want enough that your napkin is going to stick to it, but you have to remember it's tissue paper. It's not, it doesn't, you don't need to just totally saturate your paper here. Okay, so I'm going to start to tamp that down. Now, also remembering that this is tissue paper, so once you've stuck it down, you can't really lift it up again. Um, more than likely, most of them, especially when you get them really, really thin, um, will tear. So you don't you don't want to be um, fussing with it a little too much. It, it's, it's very delicate paper. So then what I like to do is, so I'm going to start out with the area that I've stuck it down with. So that I'm going to bring in my brush. I might have to use that camera so I'm not hitting it again. In the last video I whacked the camera three or four times. It's always nice to make you all really dizzy. Add in some more podge, podge underneath and now I'm just going to gently tap down and take my paintbrush and kind of with whatever is left on there I can add more Mod Podge or not. It doesn't matter because I am going to be coming back in with a ceiling level. I like to tap it down. And some people don't like the creases. I actually do like the creases because I think that it adds texture. Once this is dry, it starts to feel a little bit like a canvas and more like um, like a work of art. So um, I'm just adding a little bit here because I did have a few air bubbles in behind his face and I want to make sure that it's sealed and all the way down. So this one I'm going to put aside, let it dry. Chair's quite creaky today. All right, and then I'm going to do the last couple of pieces that we have here, just to kind of get going, so that it's all ready when I'm ready to make this card. So, in general, when I'm doing something like this, because I have so many napkins. I mean, I mean, if you think about it, and you're buying a, a stack of napkins or something like that, you're getting. 12 to 16 napkins, if not more. I mean, if you're buying the Costco napkins, good grief, you're probably getting 100 and 150. And, you know, if each panel usually gives you, each napkin gives you two to three different panels, that's a lot of napkins. So um, what we've done, uh, friends of I, friends and I, what we like to do, our crafting group, is we hold um, napkin swaps <laughs> because we all just decided that, you know, we love the results of what this looks like. And, you know, we don't need that many napkins. So why would we want to hold on to them all? Like, you know, I, 
I don't know about you guys, but I only like to make four to six of one particular card. After that, I'm kind of bored and ready to move on. So I don't want to have to make 150 cards out of the same image. So we do napkin swaps and everybody has different tastes. So it's that's also nice. So you don't have to buy, you know, a whole stack of napkins. So I'm just going to catch these edges here because they're still sticking up. So I want to make sure that I'm, when I'm ready to come back, everything right to the edge is nicely sealed. Okay. I didn't do a super large coating on here. Oh, I'm missing some right there. No. Okay, so that will, these will dry quite quickly because I haven't done a huge coating, but in order to make this easier for you guys, and so you guys didn't have to wait a ton of time, I'm going to move on to the next step. And I happen to have one right here that I worked on. Um, as I was saying, what I like to do, because I'm making a bit of a mess to begin with, um, this is gorgeous. I love tulips. Tulips are my favorite flower. And uh, I just love this particular card. So it's so pretty. Um, but what I like to do is I spent oh, a day and a half probably, and I did 200 um, sheets. I went through almost a whole ream of paper, um, just modge podging, um, getting them all stuck down. And then I was able to get probably about 20% of them with the top coat. So now what I'm gonna do is add my top coat. So this is well sealed. And if I wanted to, I could just leave it like this and start to create my card from this. So I can either use, come in with like a square die cut or a round one or, oval or um, rectangular, a slim line. Maybe I could make a small slim line out of this. Um, I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do, but um, I do actually want some glitter on this. So if I didn't want glitter, I could just leave it like this, start cutting it up and get ready to go with it. But I, because I think this image is really beautiful, I do want a little bit of glitter on it. So I'm gonna come in again with some Mod Podge, just loading up my brush. And this is a slightly heavier coat than what you saw me doing for the base coat. It doesn't take a lot to get the um, Mod Podge to, or the, sorry, the tissue paper to stick. But because I want to seal, ooh, big glove there. Because I want to seal this, I'm going to add a little bit more here. Pull up my disc. All right. There we go. Now, if you don't happen to have, so I'm, I'm actually done with the Mod Podge now, so I'm gonna close that up before I knock it and manage to dump it on everybody, on myself here. Okay, I happen to have a glitter spritzer here. It's just the handiest darn thing. So you use, um, I'm gonna be using a iridescent or white um, clear um, microfine glitter. That's what you wanna be using is a microfine glitter. If you don't happen to have one of these little puffer things, you could just pour your glitter on here and then uh, tap it off kind of thing and, and be good to go. But because I have this thing, I love it. Um, you can get these at craft stores. I actually got mine off of AliExpress. I ended up getting two of them. And uh, and then I just buy the glitter to put in here. Uh, the Nouveau, I think if it's the one that I have in here is by Tonic Studios Nouveau. Um, iridescent microfine glitter. It's very, very good stuff. And then I can just poof this. I'm going to pop it like this couple of different angles and you might not be able to see it through the camera but it is actually just puffing out little bits of glitter and this way um, I do like I like glitter obviously for those of you who have um, been on my channel before but um, if you, it, if this is a really good way to not have it all over the place a little bit more control okay so I'm basically so you can see here I have very well maybe you can't see because I'm not sure how much my light is reflecting and and whatnot but there's not a ton of glitter on my surface here and i don't have a lot on my hands which is great which is what makes this thing really really awesome okay there's a little bit on the sides of my paper which i can tap and um, but the majority of it went into the area where the glue is or the mod podge is which is what i want now i'm going to put this aside to dry we're done with the glitter Okay, so I'm going to put this aside to dry as well. Okay. So that was step one and step two. Step three is now creating your card. So I had 
this was the original napkin that I had used. Sorry, let's turn that around. So it's got these beautiful calla lilies and um, some sort of, I think this is like a, a well, a rose or a, um, a lotus kind of thing, just in different colors, but it's just beautiful. So not my colors, but I just love this. And what I've done is I am going to be creating a slimline card with it. So I took this panel, essentially, and I trimmed it down because I don't have slimline dies like nesting dies. So I just created my card base. Um, I trimmed down a white piece of, uh, this is, I think, 110 pound Nina Classic Crest Solar White um, cardstock. And uh, I need it to fit into a business 10 envelope. So, or a slimline envelope, which is four and an eighth by nine and a quarter. This particular card stock that I cut down, I cut down to three, sorry, seven and three quarters by eight and a half. So I took a eight and a half by 11 sheet and I cut off, oh no, it's going to be now there. I think two and a quarter is what I cut off. So basically to make it, seven and three quarters by eight and a half. So then I folded it in half. Okay. So now my card is three and seven eighths by eight and a half. So it's eight and a half tall by three and seven eighths. That's what it is when you fold it in half. I'm matting it in this uh, burnt orange color. And my card front matting here is three and five eighths. And I'm sorry about all the eights. Um, just sometimes when you're dealing with uh, slimline cards that's what it ends up being so in order to have this nice um quarter inch around all the way that's what it ended up being so the card the matting here is three and five eighths by eight and a quarter okay. and then i trimmed down my card front to three and three eighths because i again i want that nice um quarter inch around on the sides here and by eight eight inches tall okay and without some tape here i don't know what i've managed to do to my uh tape runner but it is currently not working the way that i like it to work so double-sided adhesive to the rescue And I'm going to add just a couple of pieces down the center because this was, um, although I didn't use it like as a watercolor or anything like that, when you're using sometimes a glue, like a liquid of any kind, uh, sometimes your things will warp a little bit. This isn't bad. It's been a couple of weeks since I um, went and uh, did all of the trimming and everything like that. And um, so everything has kind of straightened out a little bit, which is great. Makes it easy to use then, which is always nice. Okay, so I want to make sure, so my card is opening this way, and I want to make sure my flowers are going up. I almost put the other one on upside down when I was creating the example. That's always, that's always a good feeling. Okay, so I'm just going to eyeball this and try and get it as centered as possible by eyeballing. And then I have a couple of different sentiments prepared here. Um, now, this is a fairly busy background, and I didn't mind on this one, I did a white sentiment. So the cardstock is the same. Um, it had a sh uh, shadow, so I did the white shadow layer and then used the same cardstock. So I, I cut it out three times in white, stacked it, and then I put the orange, like this burnt orange, on top. And um, yeah, it gives us this nice dimension. And then I used my Wink of Stella to add a little bit of shine. And then I topped it off with some glossy accents and then just added a couple of jewels. But so I could do the same thing. I have this uh, little sentiment here, which has the white shadow and then the uh, same process. So the white shadow, and then I don't know if you guys can see that there, but there is some dimension. So I've got three, sorry, two more of the white, a little note cut underneath there. 
So that's one thing that I could do. And, uh, and I don't mind that. That's not too bad. Like I could even put that a little bit to the side here and just kind of catch the edges like that. Um, but this is, this is a pretty big card and we've got a lot of surface area here. So one of the other ideas that I had is in order to have this demo, because this particular die that I have that says happy mother's day doesn't have the shadow layer, but um, and just doing the orange on here, like the, the regular sentiment, even though I've added extra layers, so you can see the white, maybe you can see the white under there. Yeah, you can see the white under there. Um, it, it just kind of faded into the background. So I wasn't, really wasn't sure how I felt about that, if I liked it or not. So I did, I put it on some vellum instead to help it kind of stand out. And then I would do the same thing. I haven't done it yet, but I thought it'd be nice to, um, if I were to add uh, the Wink of Stella on top of here and then also finish it off with some glossy accents, that would help it stand out. Like that's that's not too bad on there. And the other thing that I did as well is instead of using the same as the matting color, I also have it in blue. So what I'm going to do is show you how I did this. So this is just um, simple fussy cutting or bubble cutting around to create a sentiment. So I wasn't sure if I liked the white or sorry, not the white, the orange or the blue. Um, because neither of these particular sentiments have um, shadow layers. I'm just I just glued them onto my vellum. And now I'm just kind of going to go around the word. Just kind of shifting my scissors in and out a little bit just wanting to have a little bit of an area around it not a lot i'm just basically following the letters and in and around a little bit so you can even hear where i did this today because i wasn't sure how i felt about the orange oops And so I thought I'd try out this blue and see if that worked a little bit better. But I originally had an orange one there. So you can kind of see it's got this little layer. So there's a couple of white and then there's an orange one under there too. And so you can catch the, if you're close enough to it here, you can kind of catch some of the orange. Um, just kind of popping through as a bit more of a shadow on the side of it there. Okay. So now we've got... We have a die that didn't have a shadow layer, but now I've been able to create my own little shadow. And so I could add that on like that. So from a distance, it looks pretty, um, looks like it gets covered up or lost pretty well. But when I get it closer, you can see actually it's not so bad. I, actually, I do think that I like the orange on there better though. And then I think if I were to go back and do make it pop like this with the glitter, the, the glitter, I'm not sure, there you go, with the glitter and the shine. I think that that's actually gonna pop off of there quite nicely. So this is what I'm gonna stick on there is this Happy Mother's Day. And we're getting, getting close to that here. And I think I wanna keep it um, right in and around this area here. I want this flower to be visible and this flower up here to be visible. So in order to do this, I'm gonna use some liquid adhesive and of course, because this is vellum, so I don't want I don't want it to squeeze out and show through everything. So I'm just going to add some dots behind where my um, sentiment is on the front already. Now this is adhesive that will glow that will dry clear. It's a good adhesive. It's barely art um, glue. And it's it's a very good strong adhesive, which is what you need because there is there is glitter on on this bottom layer. So I need to make sure that whatever adhesive I'm using will be strong enough to adhere to some glitter. But I also want it to be clear and not super noticeable behind the vellum. I'm just going to get the end here. There we go. So I think you can see where I've added the glitter. You can see all those little dots. 
look almost like a string of Christmas lights there. So I'm actually going to put this on just a bit of an angle. And I have my, I'm going to put a block on that to let it dry a little bit. And then the same as the last one, I'm going to pull out, I've got these gorgeous little black pearls, but they have a sheen that has a bit of gold, um, purple, and then the same blue that's in here. And so I'm just going to put them in my little tray here and try not to dump them like the last time I did. And I forgot my jewel picker. Okay, so this. My hand on that. So I've got these beautiful, beautiful. Let's see if I see if the camera can pick that up. So it's kind of got like a copper and a bronze, and then uh, like gold, purple, and pink on it. So it's really, really cool. Little half, um, they're flat backed uh, pearls, basically. And in this really cool black color that actually goes really well with um, the purple that's in this napkin. Let's see here, one, two, three. So because this is a slim line, I like to do a few more jewels than I normally do. Well, I mean, you know, you can never go wrong with too much bling. Well, you can actually go wrong with bling, but um, I like to give as much as I can. And so I've got this nice little one there. Oh, no. And I think I need one more. So let's do so that'll be seven. And I'm gonna put these back in the little package. Last time I didn't do that, and I managed to throw them all over my desk. So all right. So now I want to um I'm gonna move some of these guys here. So I like the bigger ones. And then I'm going to take this one down here. And these, like so. And then I want these guys to start trailing upwards here. This little thing. I don't like that, I think. I'm going to fold it over. There, what do we think? Or you might not be able to see that. Okay, but. All right. Actually, I need to do this. Mm. It's generous helping with the adhesive. Mm. Oh, fudge. A minute, my thing flipped over and it got adhesive on it. Buff that off, make sure I don't get any glue on there. There we go. Well, oh, that feels like it's going to come off. That's more useful under there, I think. So this is the trick with glitter, though, sometimes you got to make sure that you've got enough on there. You got enough glue on there that it's going to hold your items. Back in. Okay, my glue that was kind of sticky. Okay. Now I'm just going to take my Wink of Stella pen and I'm just going to go across the top of my sentiment here, just on the orange part as much as I can. So I'm just using the edge of the brush and it gives it a little bit more um, because I raised my sentiment up. It's uh, helping it give it a little bit of elevation off of the vellum. So I'm not getting the vellum all glittered as well. I'd really just like it to be the sentiment.
Mm. Sorry, guys, I forgot to keep talking. Huh? So, yeah, I have so many napkins. So you can do beautiful Christmas cards. I have these really adorable peanuts, um, like the uh, Charlie Brown gang and everything like that. I had some napkins from them last year. And I created these really adorable Christmas cards. And then I added, so some had glitter, some did not. But then I have this really beautiful um, textured, um, I have a textured kind of glitter that I was able to mound up and create like banks of snow. And it was Santa Claus and snowmen and some penguins. And so they were really adorable. And then um, I had these really beautiful Native American um, napkins that I was able to create these beautiful um uh, just a really beautiful gift set and i had some inukshuk if you were canadian you know that are inuit um have these rock statues i had one of those that had the northern lights in the background like they're just beautiful beautiful um like paintings that you almost wish you could frame them well if you were to do something like this you add enough substance to it that you could actually create it into a piece of art or something so they're just yeah Super, super nice. There we go. Okay. So this is the card. And so the Happy Mother's Day stands out a little bit more. Um, I'm not going to waste your guys' time and go through and do the glossy accents. I'll do that myself. But I thought you might want to see a second card being made um, just so that you can see the process again. So what I have done is, this was a previous napkin that I had. This one's actually from the dollar store. And it says, uh, hooray, congratulations, all of those kind of things. And so what I'm going to do is, I just grab a cardboard for that. That'd be silly. <laughs> had most of this all prepped, and then I forgot to grab a card blank. Okay. Let's hold that. Pretty even here. Okay, so the card that I'm making here is a five and a half by five and a half. And so I have a friend who's going to be graduating um, in, oh, this is her last semester. So she'll be graduating right away. And um, actually, when I pulled these out, I thought these were birthday cards because I'm really needing birthday cards. <laughs> but turns out it's not. Um, so, but what I'm going to do is walk you through what I'm going to do. So I already cut these down. So this one is going to be, this is some, just some holographic kind of silver paper blinding you there. Um, and it's five and a half by five and a half. And again, because I don't have my tape runner working at the moment. Just going to use some double-sided adhesive. so and there's there's many different ways um a friend of mine does these kind of cards and she'll cut them up into like three panels and put them on some matting and and coordinate them um i've done ones where just the artwork just speaks for itself and that's all that's on the front of it uh, i don't i don't even think the ones that i did even had a sentiment they were just um you know on the inside i stamped uh, thank you thinking of you um, happy birthday. I gave them away this year uh, for Christmas to my friends and family as um, gift sets. Okay, then what I want to do is I want to layer this blue on top. That's what I'm going to do, but I want to stamp on this first. I'm going to do this, and but I want to stamp on this because I want to do a tone on tone with this background stamp that is a sentiment background stamp. So I'm doing a congratulations and the writing or the um, the words, the sentiments that are on this are things like you've got this, I believe in you. I just thought that would be a really neat kind of touch to have on a card that is talking about um, congratulations and you got this and way to go and that kind of thing. So I'm going to pull this off. It's the first time I've used this stamp. I'm going to get out my stamp platform. Okay, 
and I want to look at it and make sure that I'm reading it the right way. Okay. Actually, I'm going to pull out. So this is, I think, oh, no, I don't have it in there. What do you do with that? Ah, there it is. So I have cut a, uh, is a sticky mat. Sorry about that. It's a little loud. This is a sticky mat that should, let's see here if I cut. This is going to hold my cardstock in place. So I'm going to take my magnet and it's going to hold my sticky mat here in place so that when I close this, so I've got my, I've got my um, cardstock is centered on my, um, on my stamp. I'm going to close my mat backwards like this. And that will pick up and hold my, um, my cardstock. Now I'm not going to be embossing, so I don't need to worry about using an embossing tool or anything like that. Um, but what I do want to do is I'm going to be creating a watermark. Um, it's going to be subtle, but I want it to be visible. It's just going to change or deepen the tone on my blue. So now I'm not, yeah, there we go. Back into shot here, into frame. Okay, so I'm inking that up well with just Versamark or any kind of watermark stamp. So you can see that that actually stayed quite straight. Something with the sticky mat. And I'm going to give that a press down. And again, I'm not doing like chest compressions and making it really hard. I'm just kind of rubbing along the edge. And see here if you can see that now. You see, getting that. Great little text message. So I'm going to do it one more time because I want that to uh, that to be nice and crisp. My version of the way. Whoops. Okay, and then I'm going to take my little hockey tool here. This is just an air hockey puck. Works like a darn for using as a stamp platform to add that little bit of pressure. Okay. And I'm going to pull that up and I'm going to pull this out. Now to release, what I need to do is bend my mat backwards. And there we go. Okay. And we get this really great little textured um, sentiments that say things like stay positive and you got this. I believe in you. All those really wonderful sentiments. So now I'm just going to add um, the cover back onto my little stamp sticky mat here. And when I think about it and when I remember, this is actually supposed to just sit in here underneath the little foamy. I don't always remember, though. And you guys know that I like to clean my stamps right now because otherwise I tend to forget. So I'm just going to give this a wipe with my baby wipe here. It's just Versamark, so it's not going to hurt my card or anything like that, but it's nice to give it a little wipe. Pull that off. These sentiment stamps, I used one at Christmas time and just discovered how wonderfully um, versatile they are. And I really, really, really liked the effect on one of the napkin cards that I had done with it, which is what made me think I would like to do it with this one. Okay. So now when I was looking at this, I can go and you see how this just kind of adds these wonderful words along the side, but I actually want some of the words um, along the side to come out a little bit more. So I'm, I'm actually going to trim down my card just a bit. Okay. So I'm going to take off a little bit, probably I'm going to take off about a quarter of an inch and I'm going to do that on two sides. I want to make it square. I want to keep it square. So but I like how let's see, it cuts into the congrats a little bit, but I can cut off this orange bit here and then come a little bit from the top here because it looks like I cut off a couple of words up there too. So there we go. Okay. Mm. 
now, if I want to put that on here, now we get so much more of that texture or the um, words showing through. So it adds this really beautiful texture behind. I'm going to go in again. It's so nice on those days when you actually have nails for pulling these things off. So much handier. <laughs> okay. So I want to make sure that the writing that I have, my text, is upright. Okay. And then I want to do the same thing here. And I'm kind of going to eyeball that and get it mostly centered. Okay. And I'm going to do on the back of this thing. This is going to be going onto a fairly slippery surface. So I, I did the piece in the center on the front panel because it was the one that had gotten wet with the glue and everything like that but i'm adding a panel in the center here i don't always do that but i am because we're putting it onto something that is a little slippery right because i'm i'm going to put it on my um holographic cardstock so now what i can do is i can add it onto my uh, prepared card base so i could do it this way i can also even put it a little kitty corner just to add a little bit more um emphasis to it if i want and I kind of, I kind of like it. I think it's kind of funky. It shows a lot of that uh, holographic behind. That I think I'm going to do that. But just add it straight on for those of you that need to have it straight. That's perfectly fine. It is an individual, uh, individual creation. Okay. So now what I want to try and do is I'm going to match up some of the corners because I don't I don't want it to be off of my card here. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Not quite. Stick it down too far. Goodness for holographic kind of plastic e card stuff there, huh? Nope, well, and that's too far over here on the right. Let's fill it up again. And I'm gonna tilt it this way just a little bit. Nope, a bit more. Sorry guys. I have this great idea. I want to tilt it. I want to have it. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Okay. All right. So now I've got my card. Okay, so it's going to sit up. Well, I can't see that. It's going to sit like this. Now, I have uh, two sentiments that I've done. So again, I had, now I have this uh, yay you or the you did it. Um, I think on this one, I'm going to use the yay you and kind of put it up here. And again, because this is a fairly busy background, what I've done is it has, you can see that this has the shadow. Um, same with the shadow die. Both of these did. Actually, these are from Simon Says Stamp. Um, I think these were released last fall. And um, so I have the die and then the shadow layer. And instead of doing white, which I certainly could have done, or I could have actually done holographic too, but I didn't know that I was going to be adding the holographic to this. Um, I did, again, the uh, vellum, which helps. You can still see the background. Just um, it doesn't uh, detract, right? Like, so it, it helps uh, dull it a little bit so that you can still have your sentiment on there and have it um, still be a focal point. Okay. So this is with the blue. Now I also cut because, you know, 
you just never, never know. I also cut it out of the holographic, which could be that. What do we think? I mean, heck yeah. Okay, so <laughs> so I'm going to add that on top then. <laughs> just a little bit of it. And uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to come in with a little bit of liquid adhesive here. Oh, that was a big squidgy. Okay. Okay, so I can see here where I got a pretty big squidge. So I know that that's just going to end up um, squishing out. So I'm just going to Take my finger and just kind of dab off some of the bigger squidgies. Rub it along a little bit, just like that. And then I'm going to wipe that off onto my baby wipe that I have left handy. Now I'm just going to come in and I'm going to lay this over top. And it doesn't have to be perfect because the blue, the holographic paper, is going to pick up whatever color it's next to. So it can pick up some of this blue and be just fine. But because I also used a liquid adhesive, I do have a little bit of time to get that into place. There we go. Oh, so cool. So now I'm just gonna um, pop that on there a little bit. And then from here, so I bought these. These are some really cool little flat backed um, stars, pearls kind of thing that I got from Studio Katia. And I'm gonna pick out a couple of stars, preferably some with some nice deep colors. So I've got the blue, so I've got a yellow here. Because I've got yellow on that. Um, I could do, so it's kind of got a pink. I might have to do the purple. I've got, I've got green in my, in my blue. We have, oh, we have a red. And we have a blue. Let's go for five. So what other color could I use? I could use this little light blue. There we go. You gotta have stars on a congratulations, right? You're a star. It even says star. You gotta have the star. And then usually what I do to store these, because I've run out of my little um, bead containers, is I just kind of uh, fold the bag back together and then put a little elastic on it so that these things don't go sliding all around in the drawer. Okay. So before I figure out where I'm gonna put my um, these stars, I actually want to put my sentiment on. And I think because there's so many words that have kind of got crossed off or cut out over here, I think I want to put my sentiment up at the top here. Kind of like how that looks. So, and again, in the same way that I did with the previous card, I'm just kind of going to go behind on my vellum in the areas and just make little dots where my sentiment already is. Let's see if I can get that closer to the camera for you guys. There we go. Yeah. You don't need a lot of glue. You just you want a, a good adhesive. You want a good strong adhesive, but you don't need a ton of it. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to keep my sentiment. Um, the top of it straight with the top of my card pan, card piece here, not because I've got it off centered, right? So I want to make sure that that is still, um, still looks straight to the card. And I'm just going to take my little block here and give it a little squeegee. Okay. So in some of these stars, so I kind of like this red one. I think I want the red one to go up high. And then I'm going to have, because some of these are a little lighter. Like this yellow is very light. Actually, I think I'm going to take that red one and I'm going to go out there. So we're going to have just a couple of stars cascading off the side here. Okay, so starting with the green one.
and two more. Oh, and this red one. There we go. I'm just gonna hold up my adhesive here. So I get involved. So it's very frustrating. Go. All right. And there's our card. So, and you can see that I've got just an edge here on the last little bit of my of my card. I'm just going to put that in my trimmer and I'm going to trim that off. And we are going to call this one done. But look at how fun that is. So we've got the nice holographic shine to it. Um, wonderful congratulations sentiment. And then in the inside, I'll probably like you're a star or good job or whatever, something like that. I can uh, stamp that at a lighter time. But those are our cards for today. Just a minute, I'm trying to grab the other one here. All right, so we've got a Happy Mother's Day card coming up. And you congratulations, well done. Again, if you have any questions or comments, um, yeah, by all means, please leave them in the comment section. I'd be more than happy to answer anything that uh, you'd like to ask. If you have anything um, that you think you'd like to see a video on, by all means, also leave that below. I'd be happy to, to see what I can find and try and create something that works for you. Um, yeah, please like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great day. Bye-bye.